Porky and Bess. One, perfect. Porky and Bess were best friends, but they could not have been more different. Porky didn't mind a mess. Bessie liked things just so. Porky lived alone. He liked it that way. Bess had three kittens. Their names were Two, Three, and Bunky. Porky didn't like children much. Sometimes Bess would come to visit Porky. Porky, 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 she would say. Your house is so messy. You should keep it neater. But Porky liked his house the way it was. He liked bread that was three days old. He liked to keep it on the kitchen chair. He liked to take off his socks every day and leave them on the floor. Once a week, he picked them up and put them in the wash basket. Bess didn't like to bring her children over to Porky's house. She thought it was too messy. That was okay with Porky, but he didn't tell Bess that. Bess's house was perfect. When he went there, Porky was afraid to touch anything. The cups and plates were all lined up, littlest to biggest. There was not a speck of dust on the floor. All the kittens' toys were put away neatly. Bess, Porky would say, does everything have to be so perfect? I like things perfect, Bess said. The perfecter, the better. I just don't get it, said Porky to himself. One day, Porky woke up early. He looked out the window. It had snowed a lot during the night. The tree branches were still covered in snow. The big yellow sun made the snow glitter. It made a warm puddle of sunlight on Porky's blanket. But outside, the snow wasn't melting. It was a good day to stay in bed. Soon there was a knock on the door. It was Bess and the kittens. We're going ice skating, said Bess. You should come with us. But it's so warm in here, said Porky. Besides, I want to start writing a poem today. The second Thursday in April is poem reading day, and I want to have a poem to read. Come with us, Bess said. It will be fun. You can work on the poem later. Well, okay, said Porky, but he decided that he wouldn't skate. He would only watch. Porky put on his boots and sweater, and another sweater, and his coat, and his scarf, and his mittens, and his red hat. I'm ready now, he said. Off they went to the pond. It was very pretty with the snow falling on it. Bess and the kittens put on their skates. They glided out onto the ice. Really, only Bess glided. The kittens wobbled. Porky watched Bess skate. She was good at it, he had to admit. She whirled and twirled. She dashed and darted. Bess, how did you get so good at skating? Porky called to her. I practice a lot, said Bess. I want my skating to be perfect. Well, said Porky, I think it is perfect. As she did a beautiful backward triple flip, Porky had to admit that even though Bess was very different from him, her way of doing things might not be too terrible. Sometimes perfect was not so bad after all. Two. Porky's poem. Porky was writing his poem. So far he liked it a lot. He had written a very nice first line. I like the warm and yellow sun, it went. But what would the next line say? Porky thought about it while he took his morning bath. He was waiting for an idea. After his bath, Porky sat down to breakfast, and suddenly he had it. I like to eat a sticky bun. Porky wrote that line down before he could forget it. After breakfast, Bessie dropped by. Bess, said Porky, 
I'm writing a poem. Do you want to hear it? Of course, said Bess. Ahem, said Porky, getting ready. The poem so far. I like it, said Bess. No, no, that isn't the poem, said Porky. It's just the part where I tell you that's the poem so far. I see, said Bess. I'm ready for the poem now. So Porky read the first two lines. I like the warm and yellow sun. I like to eat a sticky bun. That is very poetic, said Bess. What comes next? It's not written yet, said Porky. I have to wait until it comes to me. Let me know when it does, said Bess. For the rest of the day, Porky waited for the next line to come. At last, just before bedtime, Porky had an idea. Bess is my very best friend, he said. I'll make this poem about her. He added two more lines. Porky stopped writing and stared out the window. He was trying to figure out the next line. I am glad that I know Bess, he wrote. Then he crossed it out. It was nice, but it didn't rhyme. I am glad that Bess knows me, he wrote next, but that did not rhyme either. He made a big black line through it. Porky put on his pajamas and got into bed. He still had a few weeks until poem reading day. He would think about it tomorrow. Perhaps the word end didn't have a rhyme. In a few minutes, Porky was sleeping. Three, Porky keeps trying. Three days later, Porky sat down again to work on his poem. And when the day is at an end, he wrote, I am happy I know best. He threw his pencil down. No, no, he said out loud. That's no good. Soon he might have to give up finding a rhyme for end. Perhaps he wouldn't have a poem to read on poem reading day. Four, mooncake. On the 2nd of April, Porky decided to make a mooncake. Porky liked to bake. Baking helped him think, and he thought his best thoughts while he made mooncake. Maybe today he would think of a way to end the poem. He was going to make the cake just the way his grandmother had done it. He had collected some moonlight in a can, just as he seen her do it. Everything he needed was lined up on the kitchen table. He had flour, milk, eggs, sugar, and sprinkles. And of course, his can of moonlight. But when he took the lid off the can, he got a big surprise. The moonlight was gone. Without the moonlight, his cake would not be special. He was feeling very unhappy when Bess dropped by. She knew something was wrong before he even said a word. What happened? She asked him. My moonlight is gone, said Porky, sadly. Oh, that's too bad, she said. She sat down beside him on the sofa. They looked into the empty can. Then Bess jumped up. I have a good idea, she said. I'll bring you a box of nighttime. I have several different kinds at my house. It won't taste quite the same as moonlight, but it will be just as good. What kind of nighttime do you have? He asked because my moonlight was from a very cold winter night. Well, she said, let me think. I have a box of fancy dresses and orchestra music nighttime. I have a summer night with loud crickets. I have a nighttime with snowstorm. And I have a foggy night on the water. I think you can have even heard a little foghorn. That one sounds wonderful, said Porky. Sit tight, said Bess. I'll go get it. 
I don't want to bother you, said Porky. But really, he didn't mind bothering her to get some night time for his cake. It's no bother, she said. My friend Georgina is looking after the kittens today. Bess went home. In a few minutes, she was back with a blue box. Now, Porky, she said, this is very important. When we open the box, it has to be very dark in the house. Close the blinds. Porky closed the blinds. They peeked into the box. Sure enough, it was dark in there. Can you hear the foghorn? asked Bess. Almost, said Porky. Porky mixed up the flour, the milk, the eggs, and the sugar. He set aside the sprinkles to put on top. It was hard to see anything. Then it was time to add the night time. Bess helped him. They were very careful. Then they put the cake in the oven. They waited. It started to smell good. Finally, it was ready. Porky gave Bess the first slice. How is it? He asked her. He was a bit nervous. Delicious, said Bess. Then Porky took a piece. What do you think? Bess asked. Extra delicious, he said. Different from mooncake, but maybe even better. I'm glad, said Bess. It was time for Bess to go pick up the kittens from Georgina's house. Porky gave her some cake to take home for them. After she left, Porky had another slice. It was very, very good. He was so happy Bess had helped him. What would he ever do without her? And then he had it. He had the last line of his poem. Five, the reading. It was a beautiful spring day, the second Tuesday in April. Porky's poem was finished at last. It was time for poem reading under the big elm tree. Bess was there with two, three, and Bunky. All their friends were there. Everyone was dressed up. Ahem, said Porky. What I like, a poem by Porky. Everyone clapped. Porky began reading. Ahem, he said again. I like the warm and yellow sun. I like to eat a sticky bun. And when the day is at an end, I like that best is my best friend. There was a pause while they all thought about the poem. Then they clapped very, very hard. Porky took a bow. Bess looked embarrassed, but Porky could see that she was happy.